Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Masculine Feminine Balance. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to spend a little time with me. My name is Eric, and I am here looking to bring you some information, some guidance, some clarity in terms of the inner masculine and inner feminine energies within you and how you can potentially bring those into greater balance. In episode five, we are going to be focusing again on solely the masculine energy. That's what I want to do here. I want to uh, just so focus on the masculine energy, get a check in with him, get some messages there. And then in episode six, we're going to focus on the feminine, but you find yourself currently at episode five. So let's get into this. I would like to start with the energy oracle deck and we're just going to get some messages in terms of your inner masculine energy, what it is you need to know right now in terms of your masculine energy and some clarity to help you bring him into greater balance. Yeah, let's get into this. Five shuffles for your inner masculine. This is one. What is currently going on with the inner Last shuffle here. This is five. All right. What messages do we have for the inner masculine? What is the inner masculine currently facing right now? The inner masculine All right. So. The energies that we have for the masculine right now are all action oriented, okay? We have the third chakra, Archangel Shamuel. Then we have action, okay? And then we also have card number four, happy family. So what seems to be going, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. And then overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the angel of strength. So the message here for your inner masculine at this time, it seems that there is a reshaping of the understanding of what a true happy family is. The happy family card can be seen as the 10 of cups. I do feel like this is family oriented for the most part. Um, in terms of your understanding or the masculine's understanding of happiness, of family, of oneness, of unity here, uh, I feel like there, that you're going through a bit of a renaissance there. There is an energy of understanding from a different point of view what happiness truly is for you, what a family truly is for you. I feel like there is there could very well be a reshaping of your friend circle even how it is you approach your friends, the type of friends that you have, the type of people that you associate with, also the type of people that you may be aligning with romantically. Um, if you've had a certain type that you've always wanted to be with, that always intrigued you, but never actually worked out well for you, it feels like that is shifting right now. Or for some of you, I am kind of seeing a little bit of a tower moment. I heard you're being forced to change the type of romantic partners, the type of friends that you seek or that you align with, okay? Um, for others of you, it feels like you're finally gaining a level of confidence in terms of making those changes, you may have felt like you needed to make those changes a lot recently, but you never found the wherewithal or the willpower to do so. I feel at this time you are absolutely being influenced, being guided to do so. I'm kind of seeing an Ace of Wands energy where you're being handed the inspiration, the energy, the wherewithal, the self-belief to make these changes in your life, okay? I am hearing that there's a little bit more that wants to come through from this deck, so I'm going to pull that, and then we're going to get we're going to go into the tarot to clarify certain things. Yeah. So, what else do we have going on for the masculine in terms of this energy? Okay, so 
What's interesting here is now we have the temple path in reverse with strategy. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck is financial constraints. So what I'm getting here is, um, you know, there is definitely a reshaping of social circles or romantic situations or just your 10 of cups, your personal uh, emotional fulfillment, right? And what is coming to an under, what, what you're coming to an understand in terms of your inner masculine energy is how, what you may have been pursuing uh, up until now, or at least in the past, was what was keeping you off of your temple path or your spiritual path. But there was a strategy to that. There's a, there's a method to all of this madness. And it's at this point, this is why the focus is changing. Because it's at this point that you are starting to understand why you may be experiencing certain lacking energies, financial constraints. I understand this talks about finances, but this card, the financial constraints card for me feels very much like the five of pentacles. Okay. And, um, the five of pentacles is an energy of kind of feeling left out in the cold or just feeling lacking. It's very much a type of FOMO energy. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you've been dealing with a lot of setbacks, drawbacks, failures, lose, lose situations, there was a strategy to that. There was a method to that because that was causing you to go within and ask yourself, why is this happening? And in terms of that, you are coming to the terms with, or you're coming to realize that whatever it was you were facing or whatever it is you were going after was not part of your spiritual journey, was not part of your spiritual, spiritual awakening process, may have even been circumstances or situations that really didn't truly resonate with you as a spirit or as a soul, as an individual. And that has been a major thing for the masculine, especially if you've been resonating with these energies or this circumstance on a twin flame level. The masculine has been dealing with, or the, the masculine really does embody the physical, the 3D element of experience and of life, whereas the feminine embodies the spiritual and the magical and the energetic, right? Well, the masculine has been heavily influenced by physical reality, physical reality and by circumstances, situations, beliefs, um, desires placed upon him by the people around him because the masculine is very much a provider in the physical sense. So there have been certain obligations or certain alignments that the masculine was told, was led to believe or felt that he needed to stick with, he needed to stay in alignment with, but those energies were not in alignment with the truth of himself as an individual, especially as a spiritual being. Now, let me make it very clear. Even though we do have the temple path here, it's in, it is in reverse, obviously, but even though we have the temple path here, that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to be walking some crazy spiritual journey, but you ultimately are a spiritual being having a physical experience. So we could literally just be talking about the truth and authentic authenticity of yourself as your soul, as your true, original, authentic self. And that is what's happening here. There is a level of getting, getting real, getting true, getting in alignment with a greater sense of authenticity that resonates more for you in this, in this happy family, 10 of cups, ultimate emotional fulfillment. And so there was a method to all this madness strategy, right? And that strategy in, in, in that strategy in, um, included or involves you walking this path, going on this journey and experiencing certain lack or loss or financial constraints even. But all of that was causing you to start to see sixth chakra, Archangel Metatron, start to open your eyes, start to open your third eye and really start to look deeper and think deeper, the thinking man. Really start to understand why am I experiencing this lack? Why am I experiencing this failure? Why am I not happy in the connections that I'm in at this time? Well, because they weren't true to your alignment. They aren't true to yourself as either a spiritual being having this physical experience or a spiritual being walking a serious spiritual path. Okay. Beautiful. I want to get into the tarot here to get a little bit of clarity for you guys. We are using the true heart intuitive tarot in this round. Yeah. Um, 
And the first thing that I want to, okay, the first thing that I want to clarify is this happy family energy. This is very much a 10 of cups energy, in my opinion, as a reader. Um, but let's see what this has for you. Okay, let's get some clarity here for the inner masculine. Can you clarify happy family, please, sir? masculine energies here for clarity for the inner masculine okay the wheel of fortune is the first card up and now that card came through okay see the wheel of fortune and then also we do have the three of swords in reverse and also underneath the wheel of fortune is the queen of cups okay so understanding understanding how it is you truly feel and what is actually truly breaking your heart, okay? This is definitely a level of the masculine really starting to come to terms with his feelings. Now, understand, you guys, um, this is not gender-oriented. Uh, uh, gender We're talking to anybody and everybody here, okay? We all have masculine and feminine energies within. So when you hear me saying him, him, he, her, she, yes, I'm talking about the masculine and the feminine, but I'm also talking about the energies within you, whether you're a man or a woman, right? So there is definitely a change. There is a shift. There has been enough heartbreak for someone to start questioning, what do I truly feel here? For someone to really start taking that leap of faith and diving into their emotions, queen of cups energy, which is allowing the, 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 the circumstances to change, the wheel of fortune, yeah? Clarity for the inner masculine. Four. And five. So clarify. We're going to clarify this happy family, ten of cups energy. Yes? Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Oh, geez. That's a lot. I'm not going to take all of these. But I am going to take that one. Okay. Overall energy here, we do have the Queen of Swords. Why? Because enough is enough. The Queen of Swords is not as diplomatic as the King. The Queen of Swords sets boundaries. The King may come to the verdict, may reach a verdict in a situation, the King of Swords. The Queen of Swords is the one that enforces that verdict. No in, if, ands, or buts about it. And for this masculine energy here, the Queen of Swords is coming through saying it is time to make a change. It is time to cut certain things, certain situations out of our energetic existence. The first two cards that came out to clarify this happy family kind of Ten of Cups energy are the Five of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles. So this is confirming what we already said about the pain the sorrow, the grief, the woe is me energy finally pushed someone into a place of independence, nine of pentacles, a place where they're now thinking and feeling and understanding for themselves. They're standing on their own saying, who am I and what is it that I actually want? Okay. You also now have the eight of swords. Well, no, the high priestess to the eight of swords. Again, there's a method to the madness, says the high priestess. The high, the high priestess represents the initiation process or an initiation into higher realms of existence, into higher realms of reality and consciousness. And so it's not like with this high priestess energy, it's not like it was going to be or the answers was going to be handed to you on a silver platter. No. You had to go through the process of feeling stuck, feeling uh, uh, trapped in a mental prison for you to start asking the appropriate questions. Where am I? Why do I find myself here? Who am I? What is it that I want? How do I get out of here? Once you start asking those questions, then the high priestess will start providing you with the answers that are necessary for you to have the new start page of pentacles. Beautiful. So with that said, Let's talk a little bit more about this strategy energy. Yeah? What is this strategy for the masculine? What is this strategy energy for the masculine, please? Okay. 
Three of Pentacles in reverse. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Sun to the Emperor, to the Seven of Wands, wow, to the Eight of Cups, to the Wheel of Fortune. There we go. All right, the, the Sun to the Emperor, the Seven of Wands, right? Is that the Seven of Wands? Yes, the Seven of Wands to the Eight of Cups and then the Wheel of Fortune, all right? So what does this mean? Well, this means that the strategy here was to get someone to finally start doing their self-mastery, to finally start working on themselves, to start realizing that they had to take control and set certain boundaries. There is, the, there is the, the representation of the divine masculine or the masculine right here with the emperor. The strategy here was to push someone or to effectively push you to a place where you started to realize, I'm sorry, you started to realize that you had to take control of your life and set certain boundaries and walk away from things that no longer served you. And in turn, changing the karmic situation for you, stepping off the karmic hamster wheel, changing the circumstances for you to get you into greater alignment with what would truly be happiness for you. That's quite beautiful. There is absolutely a method to the madness in all of this. Absolutely is a method to the madness. Okay, finally, what I want to do before we close out this reading, I want to talk about the temple path in reverse, okay? So let's get, let's see. What is, first of all, it looks like something is, yes. Interesting. So I just noticed that something was in reverse in the deck. And it just so happens to be the Ten of Cups, which is... This, a similar energy, like I was saying, is a similar energy to this happy family energy. And look at what is underneath this Ten of Cups, which is reversed. The Ten of Swords to the Devil. This is the ending of the toxic codependent circumstances that keep you from experiencing your ultimate emotional fulfillment and happiness. You can't make this stuff up, guys. I know you hear us say that all the time, but time and time again, we continue to prove it to you, right? Okay, cool. So finally, let's talk about the temple path in reverse. I just want to get a little bit of energies on that for us, yeah? What is this temple path in reverse from the masculine? Wow. Okay. What is the temple path in reverse? It's the six of cups. And what I heard with this six of cups energy is remembering who you are, which overall energy brings you justice, balance, harmony, and a brand new beginning. Because that's been a big problem. Wow, justice, ace of pentacles, ace of swords to the six of wands, you guys. Remembering who you are. You had to step off your temple path, your spiritual path, whether you are actively like really doing that spiritual thing or you're just trying to connect with the authenticity of who you are as a soul, as a being incarnated in this physical reality. You had to either step off that path or be knocked off that path or diverted from that path in order for you to remember or start to remember or try to remember or desire to remember who you are. Because once you remember or once you're aware or once you know of who you are, then that devil energy can't stop you any longer. That devil energy can't distract you any longer this is beautiful you guys i really love this okay okay so now i want to close out this reading i want to get you guys um some guidance from the gods and titans deck yeah my intention with this deck to close out the reading is to provide you with a a, a god or titan 
to help you along this specific process, this specific message that, uh, that we're talking about here in this session. Yeah. All right. Five shuffles here. Asking for a God and or Titan to step forward to aid with the healing process of the masculine at this time in this moment for this specific message, please spirit. There are three, technically. Overall energy is Odin. Guidance. Okay. So the masculine is... The masculine forces are definitely here for us. All right? But then we have two cards. We have Osiris, which came out in, in episode one, right? And Osiris talks about... Osiris is the is the spouse of Isis. These are... These two are considered to be one of the original um, representations of the divine masculine, divine feminine, the twin flame dynamic. Uh, but Osiris was killed, was murdered by his brother out of jealousy, and his body was dismembered and scattered all over the world in pieces. And Isis, his divine counterpart, his divine feminine, scoured the earth, found his pieces, and put him back together. So this is all about receiving the guidance that you need in order to defragment yourself. So call upon Osiris for the energies of that. Then we also have Aries, war. Going into battle. But what I'm feeling for Aries is going into battle for yourself. Fighting for your divine right to be who it is that you are in the truest and most, most authentic state. Absolutely. I actually really just want to read for Aries. <clears throat> okay. Let's read this. Though certainty may not... Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Though certainly not the only deity in the Greek pantheon who enjoys a good battle, Ares is the only one who represents pure, unadulterated bloodlust and force. A battlefield is a horrific place, and this indeed is Ares' energy. Although war seems like the pinnacle of many strength, of manly strength and testing, Ares doesn't support all men in war. He supports whoever showed the kind of battle styles he favors, which is a love of ferocious fighting over all else. In his work, Argon Argonautica, Apollonia Apollonius Rhodius described the warlike Amazons as combative, brutal, and mainly concerned with war, which was in their blood because they were the daughters of Ares. Temples to Ares were also found in Sparta, a society that made human sacrifices and viewed the marital arts, oh, I'm sorry, the martial arts um, uh, along almost as a religion. War still rages in many places on earth. Humans have not yet learned to control our Ares-like urges. However, the wars we wage within ourselves are possibly more destructive than those that take place on physical battlefields. If resentment poisons your blood, if the sword of rage pierces the peace inside you, if irrationality stand, stains your judgment, you may well be feeling the eyes of Ares upon you. Maybe you are in a fight with friends, you have taken to responding angrily, or your group of friends feels a rivalry with, rivalry with another. Remember, there are, all, there are usually ways of dealing with a situation other than going to battle. Dealing with anger without physical or mental battles is the best way to go, but if you feel like you are in a war, remember that there are always rules of engagement. 
So this really does feel like, so many of you may be in a really aggressive energy because of this sense of unhappiness. Instead of going to war with others, use that energy to find your pieces and defragment. Yes? All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you all so much love. And I will see you in episode six, where we speak to the feminine specifically. Yeah? Take care. Bye.